created this model last week when Halloween was just around the corner. I wanted to see if I could create a pumpkin and jack-o'-lantern in SolidWorks and also at the same time have it be somewhat non-uniform and look like an actual pumpkin. Now with SolidWorks, non-uniform geometry is particularly difficult to create, especially when you talk about something like a pumpkin. Your standard pumpkin is going to have dents, divots, and each one of these slices is going to be different. So SolidWorks is not exactly the tool for this kind of thing. It's not a tool for creating a really deformed or dented or non-symmetrical pumpkin. But you can create something that's going to look good as a jack-o'-lantern. But in this video we'll go through creating the pumpkin geometry and in the next video we'll create the cutouts for the face here and finish up the details of this and maybe create a rendering of this pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new part with inches as the length unit. And hopefully you come up with something a little bit more creative than Jack the Lantern Pumpkin Face. But that's what I decided to call this fellow. Now whenever starting a project in SolidWorks, it can be difficult to know where to start. In this case, I didn't really know what size or shape I was going to be working with. So I kind of tried to estimate what size of pumpkin I would get from the store and then I started working from there. So I laid down some sketches just to give me an idea of sort of a wireframe of what I was working with. And this is a method I'll use a lot for creating things in SolidWorks. So initially I created a sketch on the top plane. And I just kind of imagined the bottom of the pumpkin. And so I set this to 12 inches. And then from here I know that the center of the pumpkin usually bulges out Depending on the pumpkin you buy, you can get one that's pretty narrow in terms of its bulge, or it's pretty straight up and down. Or you can have one like I just showed that has a pretty large bulge in the middle and sits and has a narrower top and bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new plane. I'll just hold down control. I'll just choose out the top plane, hold down control, and drag this up and I want a plane offset by 5 inches. Now when I initially did this I created one plane and then I created another because I wasn't sure what spacing I was going to use but I ended up using the same 5 inch spacing so I'm going to set this pattern for the plane or the number of planes to create as 2. So we don't have to go in this tool and create this twice we can just create both planes in a single operation. Now for this middle plane I decided that the width of this or the diameter of this would be 15 inches. And then just for reference I converted over this sketch to the top plane. So if I just create a sketch on the top plane and use the convert entities, I can create that sketch. Now I didn't end up using this sketch to snap any geometry to it except for this point which we'll use for a revolve line. But it's still a good reference to be able to see what our sketch looks like or what our whole pumpkin is going to look like based on the position of this ring. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out. And I'll just call this Jack the Lantern Pumpkin Face 1. But you can call your pumpkin at home whatever you want. Now if I take a quick look at the original part, I started most of my geometry with a revolve, so I can take a quick look at that sketch and you can see the general shape of the sketch. So I'll go ahead and start drawing that out in the new part. And real quickly here we're going to essentially just revolve this around and then we're going to slice this into an individual slice and then circular pattern that around. And then we'll be modifying the initial slice to be able to get this sort of bulge look. You'll see when I create a circular pattern, it's just a uniform pattern after you split this up. But when you go back and modify the slice, then you get that bulge in the middle that makes this look a lot more like an actual pumpkin. So I'll go ahead and jump back in that initial part. Now we can go ahead and create the revolve. And so for that we'll need to sketch, and we can draw this out on either the front plane or the right plane, doesn't matter too much. I'll go ahead and grab that front plane and grab the line tool and then I'm going to go ahead and snap a line from that top center point to this bottom center point or to the origin same thing 
and then I can start sketching out the rest of my geometry. So for this I have a straight line come out. So for that top stem section I just have a straight line and the rest of this is arcs and initially when I created this I used three point arcs and I drew a bunch of arcs around but what I found when recording this earlier was that if you place the three point arcs a little bit off and then add the tangent relations a lot of times you'll get essentially a arc or an arc that circles out to try to form that tangent relation and moves your entire sketch so with this I'm going to try to create these all using tangent arcs and one three point arc at the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and draw this arc out and then I'll draw another tangent arc down to here and then I'm going to go ahead and add a point on this arc and I'm going to snap this to this circle and we're just going to add the Pierce relation and you can see that thing that I was talking about with the tangent relation also happens here when I choose Pierce. I'm going to go ahead and undo this and I'll try to move that there and then now if I pierce this I don't have an issue. And then for this bottom area, I'm going to go ahead and use a three-point arc. And I just created this using a three-point arc. There's a little bit of an internal radius there. And then I'm going to add a fillet right here to finish that off. But I'm going to go ahead and add a dimension here to the top. This is going to be two inches. And then this one here is going to be four. And then this one we can kind of drag out to where we want this radius here I had set to 10 inches and then this one it's gonna sit kinda of somewhere around here and I'll go ahead and add a fillet which was something like 4 inches and just snap that on the bottom and then on the top I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out a little bit until I feel like this is good if I want I could fix one of these points or some of these points if I don't want to have to worry about these moving. But I think that's about good and you can always adjust these later. SolidWorks is parametric, feature history based, so we can go back and modify things later. Now I say that and that's kind of an obvious statement, SolidWorks is parametric, it's history based, but this specific model that I'm going to create can be updated very easily and not all your SOLIDWORKS models are going to be able to update necessarily that easily. So if you link things and you set things up properly, you can usually go back and make modifications. And that's very helpful for something like this pumpkin where, you know, we might get geometry that looks a little bit off and we want to make some modifications, but we want all of our features down the line to rebuild properly. So now that I have my arcs in place, basically if I create a revolve I can get my underlying base geometry. Now when I create a revolve like this I don't really like having the lines that come with sketch arcs. So basically we have a flat line there and then an arc here, arc here, and these are all separate faces. So what I do within the sketch is use something called the fit spline tool. So if you go into the search box and choose commands and you search out fit spline you can pull this up and this will allow you to turn a series of lines and arcs into a spline. Now by default a lot of times this closed spline option is chosen. You can go ahead and just uncheck that and then you'll get a spline that fits those arcs and that line. And you can modify the tolerance on this if you want. This looks pretty good. You usually don't have to do anything with this tool. It's just basically converting your arcs over to a spline. So now we have that spline set, we can click OK and you can see that we've lost all of those lines that split up the faces. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a plane for a slice. So I can create that off of the right plane or the front plane, doesn't matter too much here. If I go into view and choose temporary axes, I can use the center axis, or I might be able to use the center axis for creating a plane, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and try this out. Choose a plane, the 
temporary axis or temporary axis and then we want the at angle option and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 15 degrees and I'll go ahead and show the right plane as well so we know what we're cutting so we're essentially gonna use these planes to just create a slice of this now originally when I created this pumpkin I just created that slice and then my circular pattern but I decided I essentially wanted to split out some of the area on this for both the stem and the bottom portion on the pumpkin that is a little bit different than the rest of the orange part of the pumpkin and for that I'm just talking about essentially what's on the bottom of the pumpkin this shape here I decided to create a hexagon to cut out both the top and the bottom so that I have more of a sort of flat geometry when I create the pattern of these slices otherwise you get more of a bumpy surface that follows the rest of these slices going all the way around and that's a little bit harder to work with so I'm gonna go ahead and create a sketch on the top plane and then create a hex using the polygon tool and we'll set the parameters to six sides and we can go ahead and just drop this in on the origin and then the orientation of this doesn't really matter I ended up choosing a dimension of three inches and I think that one I had to modify a few times so if you're working on this at home just remember your initial dimensions don't have to be your final dimensions you can modify them as much as you want so for this I created an extruded cut or sorry extruded surface and that extruded surface is just to be able to split this part up now before I go on I'm gonna go ahead and add a quick appearance to the entire part and that one's just gonna be orange that way it looks a little bit more like a pumpkin as we're working now I notice that my extrusion doesn't go through the bottom of this or the extruded surface so I'm gonna go ahead and add a direction to doesn't matter how long it just needs to go through the part so we can split it up and if the axes or the planes get distracting you can always turn these off I'm gonna turn off temporary axis there and then I'll just hit the hide all types to turn off anything else and then I have this split tool on my features tab because I do a lot of master modeling so this is a very useful tool to have on the features tab if you're going to work a lot with master models but you can find this in insert features and split so I'll go ahead and choose the split tool and I want to choose that surface out and then I'm just going to go ahead and choose to cut all bodies and if I click on both of these boxes I can go ahead and set these as different bodies you can also give them names if you want and save them out to files I'm not going to do that you can also if this consume cut bodies option is checked your bodies will disappear if you check all of them or if any of them are checked and that's checked then it'll just delete the body that's selected so just be aware of that when using the split tool so now I have two separate bodies and to make this a little bit less confusing I'm gonna go ahead and assign an appearance to the new body and that one's just gonna be white for the time being so we can see those two different bodies now if I go ahead and turn off the hide all types I'll get those planes back and what I found is if I split this now I have this weird angle on the slice that I'm gonna create and that means the pattern that I'm gonna create from this isn't gonna work properly so what I actually did was create a copy of this body and combined it out with the rest of the pumpkin body again so that I could get a single slice all the way to the center so we're going to do that using the move copy bodies tool and the combine tool and once again the move copy bodies isn't on the features tab normally but I have it added as I use it a lot so that one's insert features and move copy and then combine you can get from that pull down as well you can also get combine from the solid bodies folder if you're selecting multiple bodies you get this combine option so I'm gonna go ahead and use move copy I'll choose out this body and then there's two options here at the bottom you can either be in constraints and if you're moving a new body or moving a body you can create mates or you can translate and rotate and within translate and rotate there's this copy option 
In this case, we're just going to create one copy and click OK. And we're going to get a warning because we haven't moved the body at all. So it says neither a translation nor a rotation is specified. Do you want to proceed? In this case, yes, we want an exact copy of the body so that we can do this. Essentially, you just control click that new body and the original pumpkin body. Go combine, choose the add option, and click OK. So now if I hide out the stem portion of this, or the stem, or whatever you want to call it, somewhat of a core, I suppose, now we have this whole body. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the split tool again, and we'll just choose out these two planes, choose cut, and for this tool you don't have to click on all of these to create slices, you can just click on the slice that you want. And essentially what we're left with usually is a body for the slice and a body for the rest of what we sliced out. But in this case I think consume cut bodies is turned on, so I want to turn that off. And I have that. And then if I want here I can just go ahead and delete out this body. And I'm going to go ahead and hide these planes out. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a circular pattern from this. And you might be wondering why I would split this and then create a circular pattern. Essentially what I do is I create the slice, create the pattern, and then I'll go back in the feature history and I'll modify the slice so that every time I modify the slice I can scroll down in the history and see what changes I've made to the entire part. This makes it a lot easier to visualize the entire part as opposed to working on the slice and then creating your feature or creating your pattern and then determining that this doesn't really look like what you want it to look like. So I'll create a circular pattern and I'm going to choose this as the direction, this edge internally, and then we're going to create 24 of these. And we're going to do a body pattern. And before we do that, we're going to choose the bodies folder. In this case, I'm having trouble choosing it, so I'm going to go ahead and exit, go back into the circular pattern. I'll go into bodies first, and then I'll choose the edge as choosing that edge first got me stuck in that features and faces option. And then for this we don't have an option for merge results so we don't need to worry about that otherwise we'd want to turn it off. But now we can see all of these slices. And now if we were to look up a picture of a pumpkin on Google we'd see that this is probably too many slices for what we want to work with. We can make these slices a lot bigger if we want or a little bit bigger. What I ended up doing was Essentially, first I assigned a global variable to this angle. So I'm going to go ahead and choose plane 3 outside of that feature. In this case, instant 3D is on, so this 15 degree should show up. If you turn this off and click on plane 3, you have to double click to get that dimension. So just keep in mind, if you're trying to access that dimension, you either need instant 3D on or double click the plane. So if I double click here, I can do an equals. And the reason I'm not doing this in the plane feature is you're still not given the functionality to create equations within a plane. You can do it in things like patterns and features, but still not in the planes feature manager. So I'm going to create a new global variable called pumpkin angle. I can click on this create global variable option and I'll just click OK. And then for the circular pattern, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the 24 there. And if we just do equal to 360 divided by essentially the global variable, and before I do that I'm going to go ahead and just do equals and come down in this global variables, choose pumpkin angle and then if I just do 360 divided by that pumpkin angle it's going to set that as 24. So if I determine I need a different slice size I can then jump in the equations folder. I'm just going to right click on equations and let's say okay maybe 30 degrees is better and just keep in mind that whatever number you select here it has to be a number that 360 is divisible by without creating any decimals. So just an integer. 
So if we want big slices, we could set this as 30 degrees. In the case of my pumpkin, I ended up settling on 20 degrees, I believe. So I can go ahead and just update this to 20. And the cool thing about this method, and I'll show this in a second, but I use the freeform surface tool to modify the initial slice. And it's not a tool I use very frequently, and it's not one I've actually taught in a video before. So we'll look at that tool. But the cool thing with that freeform tool is once I add that freeform, this will look a lot more like a proper pumpkin. But if I go back and modify this global variable, the freeform typically still rebuilds. So if I set this as 20 degrees right now and I go back. I like my geometry on this slice, but I want it to be bigger. The modification we're about to make usually still sticks with whatever change you make. So we're going to go ahead and go into the Surfaces tab and choose Freeform. And I'm not going to go into too much detail on this tool. I'll show you generally how it's used and we'll make a few simple modifications using the tool. Now when I click on this face I get an error. It says freeform feature cannot be used with this face. It contains a degenerate point. See the converging lines in the mesh. So if you turn on the mesh you'd see some converging lines on this. But essentially what's happening is that this tool doesn't like that this converges to a point. So within SOLIDWORKS surfacing without getting into too much detail you can have lines converge to a point and that creates what's called a degenerate surface. Essentially, you don't want lines converging into a single point like this. And there's two ways in which this works in SOLIDWORKS surfacing. If you created a boundary surface using just these two edges, it essentially crams a crosshatch into this point. So you end up getting problems at this point. If you create a fill surface, for example, Essentially what it does is it creates a overbuilt surface, so you have a four-sided surface that's trimmed down to this point. So instead of those lines converging to this point, it's just trimmed out, so those lines just kind of disappear. And if you're curious about what I'm talking about, I have another video on YouTube about degenerate surfaces in SOLIDWORKS. So if that is something you want to know more about, then I'd go look at that video. But essentially all we have to do with this is not converge to a point. So we can cut off a little bit of material and if we want the core as a reference, we can essentially cut anywhere on the internal circle within this hex. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cut. And we can create a cut on the front plane here. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw in a rectangle and then create a quick extruded cut. And this one doesn't need to be a very large cut. We can cut off, let's say, 0.2 inches. In the feature scope, we're going to go ahead and just select our slice and then click OK. And then now if I isolate this body, you can see we don't have that point anymore. And if we go into the freeform surface tool, we can choose this face. Now, basically, the way this tool works is it creates a mesh of the face and then you can choose to create curves going in either direction and on each of these blind curves you can choose a point to drag out and drag the face so if you can imagine just grabbing some play-doh on a face if it had some surface tension it would pull the entire surface so that's essentially what we're looking at with this tool so you can do this once again through points or something called a control polygon and if you know splines you'll know what a control polygon is but something I'm also not going to go into detail here as it's not particularly important for creating this out. I'm actually just going to work with one curve and that's just going to be running basically from north to south on this part so I can choose this flip direction option and I'm just going to place this as close to the center as possible. It doesn't matter too much. You could also offset it if you want and it adds some non-uniformity to your pumpkin. So this is a place where you can play around with this tool and you can make it look more accurate, not probably not exact in any way, shape, or form to a real pumpkin, but you can make it look a little bit more non-uniform and so more accurate to what a pumpkin would actually look like. 
So with this, I started with a point in the center and dragged that point, but didn't really like the results. So I ended up adding a point closer to the top, maybe a third of the way in here, and one at the bottom, same, maybe a third of the way or so. And essentially what we're going to do is just create a bulge within this face. Now what we could have done instead was we could create a plane right in the middle of here or right where this curve is and then we could create a sort of offset spline and just create a loft. So that's one way people do this. I decided to just use the freeform tool in this case because it is a pumpkin and the less uniform the better. So now if I right click and just turn this add points option off you can now grab these points. So if I turn this and I grab this green point, I can start to drag it out. And you can see that surface starts to bulge. So when you do this with this tool, you can do this multiple times and just jump back in this feature as you're working. If you don't like the results that you're getting, you can always make modifications. In this case, I'm just gonna drag this out a bit, maybe not too much. You also have this undo button. If you don't like what you just did, you can undo it. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then if I come down in the feature history of the circular pattern, I already have that pattern in place. And I can see if I like the results. And then you get an error with the circular pattern. I forgot that I'm actually removing the edge that this was created from. So if I go into temporary axes, this will probably work. Looks like it doesn't. But if I choose the, or rather if I go back before the circular pattern, if I choose the right plane and the front plane and just create a quick axis, it'll be right in the center. And then if I go down to the circular pattern, then I can go ahead and just quickly choose out that axis. And this should update properly or without any errors. And I'll go ahead and just hide that out. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off temporary axes as well. So now if I wanted I could modify that freeform geometry a little bit. And to go back and modify the same curve you click on the curve and then you can you can always drag points here. I can drag this out some more if I want. Click OK and I can see what that looks like here. So if I'm good with that I can keep that as is. I also have the option of if I want, I could always go back into that plane three, edit the feature, and if I want this to be bigger, let's see if 20, 24 degrees would work here, as it would create 15 slices. Or I could even go as far as making this 30 degrees or even bigger and changing that. Now, when I changed this, this went back to exactly what I had before. And the reason for that is it's set by a global variable. So I actually have to modify this here in order to get this to stick. So we can try 24 out first, and then we could try out 30 if we wanted. I like 24. In the case of the original part that I showed you, it was 20 degrees. So we'll go ahead and stick with this 24 degrees and these 15 slices here. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I have all these pattern slices. Now that I have these slices, I don't need to modify them individually in terms of the bodies. I can have them all as bodies, and I can always modify these faces later individually if I, if I wanted. If you really wanted some extra credit here, you would modify each one of these faces separately, but that would be fairly time consuming. And with the freeform tool, that might also mean a lot of rebuild time, because the freeform tool does take a little bit of extra time usually to rebuild. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those and right click and say combine and add those together. And then the next thing I did with this was show the stem here. And I can't really see it here because it's underneath all of these slices. So essentially what I did was use the move face tool. And this tool just allows you to offset and translate and rotate faces. Once again, it's another tool that I added to the features tab. This one is insert face, I believe, and move. So I'm going to go ahead and select out this top face, and I offset this just by 0.05 inches, nothing crazy. 
in the Y and did the same on the bottom. So once again, move face in the Y and you'll see I have this offset option. When I tried to use offset for this, it didn't work. So I went ahead and used the translate option and then this one is going to be negative 0 0.05. So essentially I just wanted this to show a little bit so I don't have to do any more work with those faces that were underneath this new moved face. So for creating the stem, I, I liked the bottom in terms of its sizing, but I thought the top was a little bit too big for a stem actually just coming directly off of this. So what I decided to do was just create draft on this body. And so if we just right click and isolate the body, and I'm already in isolate, so I'm gonna go ahead and just right click, isolate that body, choose the top plane, and then I can go into the draft tool. And then I'm just gonna select out these six faces here. And for this, I just decided on one and a half degrees of draft. Basically, I created this with a with one degree of draft, and then modified the feature to two degrees, and then dropped it back to one and a half, and decided that was about the right size for what I wanted to do. But you could always make this smaller or bigger, depending on what you want there. Now, in terms of geometry, basically what we have left is creating the stem. But before I created the stem, I wanted this to look like a actual jack lantern, so I decided to create a cut for where you'd be pulling out that stem area from the pumpkin. So I have that initial plane 2 that's on the top and essentially I just created a plane off of that offset by an inch just so it's above the pumpkin. And then I created a sketch using the polygon tool and I set this to be an octagon and I just used this to cut out some of the pumpkin and split this into two bodies. So the dimensions here aren't too important. You could have a small cut, a big cut. I decided to go with this octagon because typically when I cut these out, I could make it more sides, but it just gets a little bit complicated. But typically when I cut these things out, the lines are pretty straight because I can't create a curve with a knife. So that's what we have here. And so with this, we're gonna create an extruded surface to use as a splitting tool. And for this, I went in something like two inches. I could probably go in a little bit more here. Doesn't matter. But what I did was create 10 degrees of draft. So usually when you cut something like this, you have some angle going in. So we'll have some draft, 10 degrees, let's say. And then I'm going to go ahead and just right click and isolate this body. And then I'm going to right click one of these bottom lines, say select loop. That selects the wrong things here. Let's try right click. It doesn't look like I have a good selection set for choosing these out automatically, so I'm just going to control and select all these lines. And what we're doing is creating a plane on the bottom, or creating a surface on the bottom to close this out. And so I just want that chain there, and I'll create a planar surface. And then I'm just going to knit these two together. And now that I have these knit, instead of using the split tool, I'm actually going to use a thickened cut with the surfacing tools. And that'll more accurately depict what we'd end up with if we were actually cutting this out. You're going to cut with a knife with some sort of thickness. So if we do a thickened cut, and maybe let's say we'll set this to 0 0.05 inches, and just click OK. We're going to just go ahead and keep all the bodies and just click OK. And you can see that gives us this nice little gap there that would probably be there. And now we have those separated bodies. And we've separated this into four bodies. We'll combine those out later in the next video. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off with a stem. And I created the stem using a boundary feature. And essentially what we'll do is we'll create a curve that we want to draw this about and then we'll create a boundary feature. Now, originally I tried to create all kinds of guide curves or center curves, and I ended up with the feature just not working very well or not looking very good. So I ended up with a very simple boundary feature, or I ended up with two pretty simple boundary features. 
that will give us the results that we're looking for. So I did this using a couple three-point arcs. And so I'll draw out the first arc. And I'll go ahead and make it coincident to one of these lines, which will put this at the same level as those edges. And then I wanted this to look a little bit non-uniform as well, so I didn't want it to be a single arc. I decided to make it two arcs and then just put a fillet in between these. So we can do something like this and then add a fillet between the two. so that it has sort of a changing curve. So the stem will also look a little different than the other model. And I'm actually just remembering right now that this curve's not gonna end up mattering because we don't end up using it as a center line. What ends up mattering is just this point here. And so I'm not gonna worry about defining anything else in this sketch. The initial way I tried to create this was using a loft, using a center line parameter. But that didn't end up working. And I could get that to work here Essentially, uh, what we're going to do, if I went back and created a quick 3D sketch, we're going to use the 3D sketch here for creating the stem from this face. So basically, all of these lines are not essentially in plane with each other, but we can use this for our boundary tool or for the loft tool. And if you did actually want to use a center line using the loft, you'd need something running across, I think, here that you could snap to. So because we don't have sketch geometry, or if you look at the other part, I didn't have sketch geometry to snap to, I wasn't able to use that center line parameter on the loft. But if I do use a loft, I think I would get uniform geometry. And I want my stem to be a little bit twisted so it looks a little bit more realistic. So essentially what we're going to do I'm going to go ahead and use this plane to create another hexagon to loft to. And so what I did with that was I created a sketch and I just used an offset entities. So I'm going to go ahead and select this chain, use offset and reverse this offset and put this on the inside. So let's say this may be a quarter, maybe a little bit larger. Let's say so this was something like 0.4 inches, maybe a little bit bigger, let's say point or rather a little bit smaller. And then once again, to go with the theme of non-uniformity, I actually went ahead and deleted the offset. And once you delete that offset, this removes any of those relations. So the only relations we had there before were the offset relations. So once we delete that, we can make this whatever sort of shape we want. So we can make this a little bit weird and that'll give us more non-uniformity in this model. So we can do something like that. And then with that already selected, I can just jump in the boundary tool. And then I can choose this out. And I could have this twist here if I want. I didn't have this twist originally. So I'll go ahead and snap that as close to there as possible. And then for the sketch nine, I made this normal to profile. And then we can turn merge result off in this case. Essentially what you have here, if you look at a section view, is a big gap that you'd wanna fill. So we'll wanna fill this gap before combining these out. So next, let's go ahead and finish out the stem before we combine this out. So for this, I'm gonna do a sketch on a plane coming off of this point. And for that, I'll just grab the plane tool, select that point and this arc, and that'll create a plane that is normal to this line. And then from here, I can create a uniform hex if I want. It doesn't matter too much. I'm gonna create another sketch and I can create a hex at that point. And I can maybe turn it a little bit. I could delete the symmetry if I want. In this case, I think I didn't delete the symmetry. 
as I had already rotated this and this one's asymmetric so we should get something that looks pretty good. So from here I'm going to go ahead and create another boundary. I'll choose out this face and then I'll choose out this sketch. And with this I did a normal to profile and another normal to profile here and then we can change the connection point so there's a little bit of twist but not necessarily too much twist as if we add too much twist this is going to become really narrow in the center I think you can modify some of these options and they might help but in this case it doesn't look like if we had it turned that much that we could really balance the center out that's typically what guide curves are for so if we want to get something that's pretty close here but doesn't taper down too much. We can do that. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK for this. And that gives us a pretty good looking stem. If we wanted we could change this a little bit. But I think I'm reasonably happy with the results there. Now if we wanted to actually follow closer to this curve we could modify those normals. I could bring this up a bit if I want. We could bring this in or out a bit and that would give us more of that initial geometry that we drew out. And then for this body, the way in which I combine this out is actually just using a move face for this. And I'm going to go ahead and offset this out. I think I ended up offsetting it out like an inch. And then I think I went ahead and combined these out. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this pumpkin and I'll hide this out as well. So I think if we combine these three or rather it's, yeah, these three bodies this should look pretty good. And for these faces, if I just right click and say select tangency, I can select each one of these. And actually what I did next was I created fillets and then if I then right click and say select tangency, it's really easy to select out all of these faces at once without selecting any of the pumpkin portion. So if I once again just go ahead and select out those edges and I can set this fillet to whatever I want. If I want it to be large I could do that. If I want it to be small I could do that as well. I think I settled on something pretty small. And then once again if I right click and say select tangency I can select out this whole area and then I can control select this face too if I want. On the other model I did end up adding fillets to this front face too so I'll go ahead and do that. Once again right click select tangency and then I can right click again and jump into the appearance choose the face option so that I get all those faces and then I'm going to set this to green for now and then we can go ahead and modify the appearance in the next video. So there's our base pumpkin. It did take a little bit of time, but we now have our base pumpkin. The next video will be a little shorter and it will go into creating the face on this pumpkin as well as modifying the appearance to get it to be a little bit more accurate and then potentially creating a rendering in PhotoView 360 as well.